So we have blank plus one sixteenths is equal to three halves. So I encourage you to pause the video and figure out what blank is. What plus one sixteenth is equal to three halves? All right, now let's work through this together. Well, one thing that might make it a little bit simpler for our brains is if we were to express one sixteenth and three halves with a common denominator. Well, when we think about a common denominator, we would look at a, a common multiple of the denominators here. And lucky for us, 16 is already divisible by two. It's divisible by 16 as well. So it is the common multiple, or it is the least common multiple of 16 and two. There are other common multiples, but the smallest one is going to be 16 times one, which is also divisible by two. So let's write both of these, let's write both of these fractions. Let's rewrite this equation where both of these fractions have 16 as their denominators. This one obviously already has it. So let's write that. So we're going to have we're going to have blank plus 1 16th 1 16th is equal to is equal to let's see let's write 3 halves as something over 16. Well to get our denominator from 2 to 16 we have to multiply by 8. So we have to multiply the numerator by 8 as well. So 3 times 8 is going to be 24. Now at this point, you might be able to do it in your head. You'll say, okay, blank plus 1 16th is equal to 24 16ths. We could say, okay, this could, this is, we could view this as a certain number of 16ths. So how many 16ths plus 1 16th is going to be 24 16ths? Well, 23 16ths. If I have 23 16ths and I add one more 16th, I'm going to have 24 16ths. Another way that you could have thought about it when we actually you could even have thought about it when from the first step is you could say look if blank plus one sixteenth is equal to three halves then you could say that blank you could say that blank is going to be equal to three halves three halves minus one sixteenth minus one sixteenth this is another way that you could have tackled it if blank plus one sixteenth is three halves then blank is going to be equal to 3 halves minus 1 16th. And we know that this is going to be equal to 3 halves, we already know is the same thing as 24 sixteenths. So 24 over 16 minus 1 16th. Minus 1 16th, which we figured out is 23 sixteenths, which is equal to, I'll just rewrite it again, 23 over 16. Let's do another example. So here, this is a little bit different. I have blank minus 3 fourths is equal to 2 thirds. And there's a couple of ways to think about it. If blank minus 3 fourths is equal to 2 thirds, that one way to think about it, you could say, well, blank, that means that blank is going to be the same thing as 2 thirds plus 3 fourths. 2 thirds plus 3 fourths plus 3 fourths. And what is this going to be? Well, once again, I could rewrite both of these fractions so they have a common denominator. Well, what's the least common multiple of 3 and 4? Well, we could look at the multiples of 4 and, and, keep, and, and keep increasing them until we find one that's perfectly divisible by 3. 4 isn't divisible by 3. 8 isn't divisible by 3. 12 is divisible by 3. In fact, it's 3 times 4 is 12. So we can rewrite both of these as something over 12. So this is going to be the same thing as, so to go from three to 12, we multiply by four. So you have to multiply the numerator by four as well. So two times four is eight. Two thirds is the same thing as eight twelfths. So this is going to be equal to eight twelfths plus, and then three fourths is the same thing as what over 12? Well, to go from four to 12, you have to multiply by three. So you have to multiply the numerator by three as well. Three times three is nine. And what's that going to be equal to? So it's equal to this, which is equal to 8 twelfths plus 9 twelfths is going to be, 8 plus 9 is 17. 17 twelfths. So we get 17 twelfths minus 3 fourths is equal to 2 thirds. Now another way that you could have done it is you could have just kept it the same. You could have said, okay, let me just rewrite, let me just rewrite this but I'm gonna rewrite the fraction so that they have a common denominator. We already said, well, our common denominator we'd wanna use is 12, at least this is the one we use. We could have used 
you know, 24 or something larger than that, but this would have been the least common multiple, so this keeps things a little bit simpler. And 3 fourths we could have rewritten as 9 twelfths. 9 over 12th is equal to, and 2 thirds you could rewrite as 8 over 12. And you could assume that this is going to be a certain number of twelfths. So blank twelfths minus 9 twelfths is equal to 8 twelfths. So if I have blank of something minus 9 of something, and I'm left with the 8 of that something, well, that means that I had 17 of that something to begin with. 17 twelfths minus 9 twelfths is equal to 8 twelfths. But either way, you get 17 twelfths for our blank.